In the realm of space exploration, few ideas capture the imagination, quite like the prospect of slashing travel times to Mars from months to mere days. SpaceX's Starship, already a groundbreaking vehicle designed for ambitious missions to the Red Planet, could become even more revolutionary when paired with nuclear propulsion. This hybrid approach addresses the fundamental limitations of traditional chemical rockets, offering unprecedented efficiency and performance. Drawing from decades of research, the concept promises to transform how humanity ventures into deep space, making Mars colonization not just feasible but practical. At the heart of this innovation is the inefficiency of chemical propulsion. For decades, rockets have relied on burning chemical fuels like liquid hydrogen and oxygen to generate thrust. While this method has propelled us to the moon and beyond, it hits a wall in terms of specific impulse. ISP, a measure of how efficiently a rocket uses its propellant. The best chemical engines top out at around 465 seconds of ISP, meaning missions to Mars demand massive fuel loads. Up to 90% of a spacecraft's mass might be propellant, squeezing out room for crew, cargo, or scientific equipment. Even giants like NASA's Space Launch System or Starship require multiple launches and orbital refueling to assemble a viable Mars mission. Travel time stretched to nine months under optimal conditions, or six in Elon Musk's optimistic estimates for Starship. These long hauls expose astronauts to microgravity's toll on bones and muscles, cosmic radiation that increases cancer risks, and psychological strains of isolation. Enter nuclear thermal propulsion, a game-changer with ISPs up to three times higher than chemical systems, potentially reaching 900 seconds or more. NTP works by heating a propellant, like hydrogen or methane, using the intense energy from a nuclear fission reactor. The superheated propellant expands rapidly through a nozzle, producing thrust with far less fuel consumption. This efficiency translates to shorter trips. A nuclear-powered starship could reach Mars in as little as 52 days under ideal planetary alignments, or 88 days on average. That's a dramatic cut from current timelines, reducing exposure to space hazards and enabling more frequent missions. Imagine astronauts arriving fresher, with more energy for surface operations, rather than debilitated by months in transit. One of the strongest aspects of this proposal is its compatibility with Starship's existing design. No complete overhaul is needed. The 50-meter-tall stainless steel behemoth, launched atop the super-heavy booster, retains its core structure. Vacuum-optimized engines, internal propellant tanks, gimbaled landing thrusters, and aerodynamic flaps for re-entry all stay in place. The dry mass hovers around 120 tons, with 30 tons of propellant reserved for landings. Modifications focus on integrating the nuclear system safely. For instance, using methane Starship's current fuel avoids the headaches of liquid hydrogen which is less dense and requires insulated, cooled tanks to prevent boil-off. Methane's density allows the same tanks to hold 617 tons of propellant, boosting performance without sacrificing payload space. Performance gains are staggering. A nuclear starship achieves a delta V change in velocity of 7,229 meters per second from its upper stage, plus 3,944 meters per second from the booster, totaling 11,153 meters per second surpassing chemical configurations. This extra capability means more options. Ramp up payload to 245 tons for low Earth orbit, slashing refueling flights from a dozen to three, or push for high energy trajectories beyond LEO. For orbital missions needing 9,200 meters per second delta V, only 323 tons of propellant suffice, allowing partial fueling to cut costs or add cargo. Flexibility is key. Denser methane maximizes usable propellant, enabling ambitious goals like extended Mars launch windows or full round trips with on-site refueling before orbits diverge too far. The historical foundation bolsters this concept's credibility. 
nuclear propulsion isn't pie in the sky. It traces back to 1944 with successful ground tests of gigawatt-class engines in the 1970s running for minutes. Decades of data from programs like NERVA provide a blueprint proving NTP's viability. Flexibility in propellants from hydrogen for max efficiency to ammonia or CO2 for insider resource utilization adds value. On Mars, spacecraft could harvest local resources to refuel, reducing Earth dependency and supporting sustainable colonies. Radiation shielding, a potential Achilles heel, is addressed ingeniously. Nuclear engines emit fission fragments, gamma rays, and neutrons, but smart design mitigates risks. Engines sit 25 meters from the crew, reducing exposure to 1 625th of total output. Propellant tanks, filled with neutron-absorbing methane, act as natural barriers several meters thick during much of the journey. Additional shadow shields, like 2 centimeters of tungsten for gamma rays and 2 centimeters of boron carbide for neutrons, at just 345 kilograms per engine. Retractable flaps prevent radiation scatter during operation. The reactor's beryllium or graphite reflector curbs emissions up front. Combined, these measures keep crew safe without ballooning mass. This nuclear starship synergy shines in its potential to unlock new exploration paradigms. Shorter transits mean larger payloads, more habitats, rovers, or greenhouses for Mars bases. Extended launch windows by months align with real-world schedules, not rigid planetary cycles. Round trips become plausible with ISRU refueling-enabling returns before windows close. For humanity's multiplanetary future, as Musk envisions, this could accelerate timelines, turning sci-fi dreams into reality. Yet, the allure isn't without caveats, which we'll explore later. For now, the best points underscore NTP's efficiency, compatibility, and historical backing is transformative. By slashing fuel needs and travel times, it paves the way for routine interplanetary voyages, making Mars feel closer than ever. Buckle up, space enthusiasts, while the nuclear-powered... Starship paints a thrilling picture of zipping to Mars in weeks rather than months. It's not all smooth sailing through the cosmos. This bold fusion of Elon Musk's mammoth rocket with atomic energy brings a host of hurdles that could make even the most optimistic engineer pause. From radiation nightmares to unproven tech and logistical headaches, these challenges aren't just technical footnotes. They're potential showstoppers that spark heated debates in aerospace circles. Let's dive into the gritty details, unpacking why this concept, for all its promise, stirs up controversy and demands a reality check. First off, radiation shielding isn't the slam dunk it's cracked up to be. Sure, the proposal cleverly uses distance, propellant tanks, and specialized materials to protect the crew, but skeptics argue it's a band-aid on a bullet wound. Picture this, a fission reactor churning out neutrons, gamma rays, and fission fragments like a mini sun gone rogue. Placing engines 25 meters away cuts exposure to 1 625th, and methane propellant absorbs neutrons like a sponge. But what happens as fuel burns off? That natural shield thins out mid-mission, leaving astronauts more vulnerable during the critical acceleration phases. Add in the 345 kilograms per engine shadow shields, tungsten for gamma rays, boron carbide for neutrons, and you're tacking on weight that eats into payload margins. Critics point out that real-world testing is sparse. Historical programs like NERVA dealt with ground-based prototypes, not the dynamic chaos of spaceflight. What if vibrations or micrometeorites compromise the shielding? One leak and you've got a crew dosed with radiation levels that could skyrocket cancer risks or cause acute sickness. This isn't sci-fi paranoia NASA's own reports. Highlight how cosmic rays already pose dangers. Layering on reactor emissions could turn a Mars trip into a radiological roulette. Then there's the elephant in the room, operational safety and the hot potato problem of radioactive engines. After firing up those nuclear thrusters, 
The hardware stays dangerously hot for days or even weeks, glowing with residual radioactivity. Imagine trying to land back on Earth or dock with the International Space Station ground crews in hazmat suits. Proximity ops near the moon or other spacecraft, forget it. The radiation halo could fry electronics or endanger astronauts in EVA suits. Reuse, a cornerstone of SpaceX's cost-cutting philosophy, becomes a nightmare. Starship's rapid reusability flying multiple times a day in dreams grinds to a halt if engines need quarantine. Controversially, this clashes with Musk's vision of a self-sustaining Mars colony. Proponents wave it off as a maturity issue, but detractors, including environmental groups, decry the risks of launching nuclear material. Remember Chernobyl or Fukushima? Scaling that to space amps up the stakes. If a launch fails, you're scattering radioactive debris across oceans or populated areas. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and international treaties like the Outer Space Treaty add layers of red tape, potentially delaying deployment for years. Is the speed-up worth the geopolitical firestorm? Fuel logistics throw another wrench into the works, especially for insider resource utilization. Ezru, the holy grail of off-world sustainability. A nuclear starship guzzles nearly three times more methane than its chemical counterpart for the same trip, without saving on oxygen since NTP doesn't need oxidizers. On Mars, where ice, saru plants would crack CO2 and water ice into methane and oxygen, this ramps up production demands. Picture bootstrapping a fuel factory on a dusty radiation-blasted planet. Bigger reactors, more power, heftier equipment. The controversy? It burdens early colonies, straining resources when every watt and widget counts. Skeptics argue this undermines the whole point of nuclear propulsion efficiency in transit, but inefficiency at the destination. Hydrogen alternatives promise higher ice P but bring their own baggage. Cryogenic storage that boils off, requiring constant cooling and bulkier tanks. Methane sticks to Starship's playbook, but is it optimal? Debates rage in forums like Reddit's RSpaceX, where engineers crunch numbers showing ISRU scales poorly for nuclear setups, potentially locking us into Earth-dependent supply chains longer than anticipated. Technology maturity, or lack thereof, fuels the fieriest controversies. While NTP boasts a pedigree from the 1940s and 1970s tests, methane-fueled variants are largely uncharted territory. Hydrogen was the darling of old programs, but methane's denser, more stable yet unproven in nuclear contexts. Ground tests are one thing, orbital damas another. NASA's Draco project teases modern NTP, but it's years from maturity, let alone integration with a beast-like starship. Critics lambast the proposal as vaporware, pointing to historical flops. NERVA got axed in 1973 amid budget cuts and safety fears. Today, with climate change and nuclear proliferation concerns, public backlash could kill it anew. Environmentalists decry uranium mining's toll, while arms control advocates worry about dual-use tech reactors that could morph into weapons. Elon Musk's move fast and break things ethos collides with nuclear safety first mantra. Sparking ethical debates. Should private companies like SpaceX handle fissile materials? Or is this NASA's turf? International collaboration. Thorny, given export controls on nuclear tech. Cost and timeline overruns loom large, too. Retrofitting Starship means redesigning tanks, beefing up landing reserves for heavier dry mass, and retracting flaps during burns simple on paper, pricey in practice. Estimates gloss over R&D billions. Historical nuclear programs ballooned budgets. Controversy brews over opportunity costs. Why pour funds into nuclear when chemical Starship already iterates rapidly? Musk's timelines Mars by 2026? Stretch credulity with nuclear added. Public perception adds fuel. Polls show wariness towards space nukes, evoking Cold War fears. Yet, Advocates counter that these challenges mirror early rocketry risky, debated, ultimately triumphant. 
In the end, these controversies aren't deal-breakers, but crucibles testing our resolve. They force us to weigh the thrill of rapid Mars hops against sobering risks, pushing innovation while demanding safeguards. As we grapple with radiation, ops, logistics, and maturity, the nuclear starship debate mirrors humanity's spacefaring soul, daring yet cautious, visionary yet grounded. As we stand on the cusp of a new era in space exploration, the nuclear-powered starship concept forces us to confront a pivotal question. Do the dazzling promises outweigh the daunting shadows? This hybrid marvel could redefine humanity's reach, but only if we navigate its controversies with eyes wide open. Let's synthesize the highs and lows, peering into what the future might hold for this atomic ambition. On the plus side, the best features shine like beacons. Efficiency reigns supreme tripling ISP, means hauling more to Mars faster, turning nine-month slogs into 52-day sprints. Compatibility with Starship's methane setup minimizes redesigns, leveraging existing tech for quick wins. Historical precedents from NERVA-era tests provide a roadmap, while flexible propellants enable ISRU dreams on Mars. Imagine colonies blooming sooner, with round-trip missions sinking to orbital dances. Payload boosts to 245 tons slash refueling needs, democratizing space for scientists, settlers, and dreamers alike. In Elon Musk's multiplanetary playbook, this isn't just an upgrade. It's the accelerator pedal. Yet, the controversies can't be ignored. They're the cautionary tailies etched in radiation and red tape. Untested methane nuclear tech risks billion-dollar flops, with post-burn radioactivity complicating reusability and ops. ISRU strains from tripled fuel demands could hobble early outposts, while shielding solutions feel like calculated gambles against cosmic rays. Safety fears, from launch mishaps to proliferation risks, invite regulatory quagmires and public outcry. Is privatizing nukes wise in a world wary of atomic mishaps? These aren't abstract. They're barriers that have felled programs before. Balancing it out, the path forward hinges on investment and iteration. NASA's Draco Demos could mature NTP, bridging gaps in testing. International packs might ease export hurdles, fostering collaboration over conflict. SpaceX's agile ethos could prototype solutions, like advanced robotics for handling hot engines or AI-optimized shielding. If costs align perhaps offset by reusable gains, the economics tip favorably. Public buy-in? Frame it as green. Less fuel mass means fewer launches, curbing emissions. Ultimately, yes it's worth pursuing. The rewards eclipse the risks for a species eyeing the stars. Nuclear starship isn't flawless, but it's the bold stroke needed to make Mars home. As tech evolves, controversies may fade, leaving a legacy of leaps. What say you explorers? The cosmos awaits our verdict.